So a new feature which is reasonably similar to um, the custom site settings feature, um, but is custom user settings. What do they call it? Custom custom user settings. Um, so what this allows you to do is um, define extra settings or metadata, profile data um, on your users that you'll um, start to see in the edit screen. Um, so what we do is we go and make a content type. Um, and we make a special content type called, let's call this profile. Let's call it user profile. Um, probably don't want any parts, we'll just add some fields. We disable all the creatables and we give it a stereotype of custom user settings. Save it there and we'll start adding some fields to it. Um, so we could add a media field to it. And can we add a media field and also define the center of your picture? We probably could, yeah. We should try. It'll all depend on where we display it. Um, um, so you know, other stuff like the first name and, um, and, and kind of anything that you want to capture about a user. Um, and if I go into the media field, I'll turn multiple off and well, we'll pick a center, shall we? Um, so we'll save that. And then we can go back to our users list. And I can go in and you'll see how you've now got a new tab here, which is called user profile, which is the display name of the, the custom content type that we made. And we can go in here and we can pick an image for your profile and put in a name or anything else you want. Um, so a bio, a bio, um, taxonomy. Sometimes it's um, like I said, you can put any field there you want. So if we had a look at um, the content types, um, there's a couple of rather kind of useful ones that you might might find yourself using. But when you say any any field, I could also use any part, right? Or any part, yeah. So, so you could have I, a, um, an HTML body part to give you. Yeah. But I'm mentioning these examples to, to trigger ideas of what people usually want to do, and they don't know how to do it. And this is how to do it. Another example with using parts is, let's say you want to see the list of external user accounts you have. We don't want to store more data. The idea is that you could create a part that is just called external account part that is just displaying some, some something else from some other store and then by just attaching that to a type that will have this stereotype then we will have a type a, a tab at the top of user profiles that is called external accounts and where we could list the facebook google twitter all the external accounts that are as associated to the current user and today there is no way to see that from your own account Absolutely. Um, and one of the other things that I find myself storing on users is um, a little bit of logging information, um, which is not related to profiles on the front end, um, but as they go through a payment process to become a, a member of the site, um, we we track how long they're there. I mean, before they, they expire after a year. Um, so that's also information that we're tracking on the user. Um, so not particularly related to, to profiles, but information meta about meta information about where they come from and how long they're allowed to exist for. And when, I'm, when I mentioned the, the bio, that's what I mean also for the blog. Um, so when you have multiple bloggers on the blog and a blog post could, is associated to a user like the owner, for instance, the author or any other field you, you would want or will select or multiple authors, we'll see later, then you might want to display with all the authors, the, the thumbnail, like the picture, but also a little description of the author, what it does and links and whatever. And that's where you will put it in the user profile. Um, 
And just so you're aware, you can, as Seb was saying, might have another type here. This might have a, a part potentially. Um, so you can, it always gets in the way there. If we go back to the user now, we see we've got another type that's that's available there. Um, and one of the other things that you know you might find yourself doing, um, I didn't configure it, but you can also potentially use a content picker here. Um, there's some advantages to linking to a, um, another content item from the user um, because you then get um, all the versioning that you get with a content item and it's it's a little bit more display orientated. Um, so that's, yeah, there's a lot of options, a lot of things you can do with it. Um, we've already had the functionality to extend the user previously. Um, by code. But by code. Um, and one of the things you'll still probably have to do by code, um, if we, oh, I could probably show and, you. In the and when you say by code, the idea is that here we are using the, the shape composition with a driver, the driver composition of shapes. So you could just implement a custom driver of I user, and then it will be plugged in the content section here. So that still works, and we do it for stuff that is mandatory. But now we can also create a type with a stereotype and assign it to the, and that's it. Yeah, that's and it's it's, it's more convenient because it's difficult to do a, a media picker um, in code, um, but reasonably easy to do it. Um, and you yeah, experienced it, experienced it because you implemented the, the PR, but and this is where you. You literally understand the the how composable portrait is and how you can reuse every pieces that you made around it and just by a few lines of code you have the full editor extensibility of settings tabs feels crazy yeah and this is storage every three files um, I think to yeah this has only got three files to 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 drive it it's well you know everything else is there in the framework 